Well, the most critical part of the entire build has arrived, something I worked months on designing, testing, test prototyping. It's finally here and we're gonna get into it and start tearing into it and putting it together and see even if it's gonna work. So I got the first part of the build angle gear case in and all I can say is, wow. I mean, this thing just came out awesome. The company that did this did an awesome job. They use a company called 3D Hubs and they basically contract out to China and they were awesome to deal with customer service wise and this thing just looks freaking awesome. You can see it's got a really nice surface finish here. The threads came out great. This thread came out great. It just freaking, look at that. That's awesome. We also got these dowels that locate this cover to the case. These are actually slightly undersized dowels for 10 millimeter dowels. So they do kind of just slide in and out pretty easily. They only have a little bit of slot, but um, I'm gonna get some dowels that are slightly oversized. This is exactly a 10 millimeter hole. And then that way, um, these will kind of press fit in a little bit better. Or, or maybe I can use some um, like bearing race locker to hold those in, but I'm probably just gonna get slightly bigger um, dowels. I mean, they do fit in fine. They would be fine for locating purposes. There's barely any wiggle in them, but this thing came out awesome. Just look at that. Look at that shine. Look at the surface finish down here. Like that's some machining awesomeness right there. You see the colors just bouncing off it. And again, this is 7075 T6 and Wow, I'm just I'm just blown away really. My jaw is on the floor with how good this came out. So you're probably wondering why I ordered this first, first just ordering the whole thing at once. Well, that for a couple reasons. One, I wanted to see how good of a job this company did. And from seeing this, they're gonna have no problem doing the other piece. Um, I also wanted to be able to see the surface finish of this area here. You can see there's a little dark colored here because I was putting in that adjusting nut. But between here and that adjusting nut, there's actually a slight press fit. So I wanted to make sure that all, you know, fit it up. I wanted to make sure they were doing, you know, a really high quality surface finish um, on these, uh, I guess these bores you can call them, where races are going to go and whatnot. And you can see how high quality surface finish they did here. I mean, you can see my the reflection of my finger. Um, I also measured it up. Everything's perfectly in tolerance. This is exactly, you know, the 90 millimeters that it should be. And they did a really good job with holding the tight tolerances I need it, as well as the surface finish I need it. And I'm really confident to go ahead and order the full case. Um, so I am ordering it in two parts, and that's basically the big reason why I did that. And I also wanted to see the surface finish of the back. You can see like the machining lines, but it is perfectly flat. There are no like, there's no no bumps or anything, or it is perfectly machined flat. It's just the machining marks in the aluminum that you can see. And I mean, this back doesn't matter that much because it's just getting bolted down to something. So we're gonna have sealing on there anyway. So really, really happy with how this came out. I just, I'm just really happy. So we'll get that big case ordered and uh, hopefully that'll come in another month. And I'm gonna release this whole video as one big video on the build angle gear case um, itself. The angle gear uh, case cover and I bought a brand new uh, adjusting knot that sets the ring gear preload because these old ones the threads always get you know messed up when you're pulling them out and sometimes these teeth get messed up um, but there's an official tool this is a CTA 7646 this is the official tool to actually thread this in because if you don't use this to thread this in, it's very easy to basically destroy these threads. They're very fine pitch, very large threads, and that would be a shame to destroy this on my brand new um, case cover. So bought a new one of these. I'm gonna put the O-ring on. Got it here. You can see this fits in here perfectly, and then um, obviously it goes in this way though. And so uh, we're gonna give that a uh, little test fit and try and thread it in. You can see how easy a brand new one of these threads in. Like it literally goes in perfect. The old one, the threads are so marred up that it's a pain to go in. So we'll see if this screws in all the way. It should. 
because I use the exact same dimensions that Baba uses. Uh, you can see this is just going in beautifully. Oh man, the final piece to the angle gear puzzle has arrived and I cannot wait to crack this thing open. Packaging. Oh man. Oh. You can already see it. This is insane. I cannot believe today is the day. Look at that. Oh, this is so cool. All right, let me get this all out. Oh, hell yeah. The billet angle gear case is here, and it looks freaking awesome. Wow. This looks so cool. I'm so excited to uh, get the plate and <laughs> see what this thing looks like. That's so cool. Really happy with how this turned out. We got our oil feed. We got a good surface finish on the um, areas for the bearing races. <laughs> Entering the world of billet. See, we got some nice surface finishes in there. We got our oil drain. Our flange came out great. It's just so cool. A little bit of corrosion here, it looks like. But maybe, I don't know, it's kind of like stickiness. I bet that'll come off easy. We'll have to clean this off anyway because this is going to be the mating surface for the plate. Yeah. <laughs> We also got this guy here, that's for if we want to do that uh, screw through the collar sleeve thing. We got our breather here. You can see where that actually, let's see, it's right there. So it's actually behind the bearing, but in front of this seal back here. So yeah, I'm going to run to the garage and I want to see if these bearing races fit. There's a 2000, um, or a 0.02 millimeter press fit. So... They should go in no problem. They should stay in. Um, might need to give them a little heat. Might not need to. We'll see. So yeah, I got this thing slightly put together. And um, I mean, uh, really cool, man. Just started throwing some stuff together to basically mock it up. I got the gear set in there. I checked the backlash, it was about 10 thousandths. It needs to be about 5 thousandths. So we're probably gonna have to shim it a little bit. But I got it pretty damn close. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot in the pinion. I mean, really what you care about is the uh, the ring gear, which, let's see if we can hear this. It's kind of hard to spin it, but. I mean. It's getting there. We're gonna, um, next, basically, I'm gonna pull the gears, probably next video, I'm gonna pull gears out of this thing, and, uh, or out of one of my donor angle gears, and then we'll actually start mocking up a buy all new bearings and everything, and really start putting this thing together, because we're gonna have to figure out what kind of shims we need. I don't really think we're gonna have to change the shims too much. We might be able to get away with just sanding them, because we gotta decrease the shim thickness on the ring gear. So we might be able to get away with just sanding them, um, like a really fine grit sandpaper. And I did a little bit of gear marking compound on the ring gear and it was pretty close. Um, I think it's going to get a little bit better when the, the backlash kind of comes in a little bit. But I'm really happy with how this came out.
So yeah, I got the unit fully assembled and everything. I got the ring gear preload set up, the pinion uh, gear preload set up. I got the backlash set. I got the gear tooth contact pattern all set. Um, and I got everything all put together and it spins really nicely and everything's all perfectly within spec. So I know that all my measurements were perfect um, for the case and everything for, you know, the pinion uh, offset, the pinion height, the ring gear height, all those three critical measurements that I took from the old case. And also, I know I had to do a little bit of shimming to get the backlash in spec, but basically I'm going to do a quick little overview of the setup process. I'm going to do a full in-depth video, but I need to order all new bearings, all new seals, all new bolts and everything. And then I'm going to do a really in-depth setup process of the whole thing. So let's get into the quick little montage, quick little overview real quick. And then in a couple more videos, I'll, I'll do a full in-depth uh, detail of the setup process. Whole bunch of stuff going on here, but I got the case, all the gears fully set up and everything is like perfectly in spec, which is a huge relief on my end because, um, <laughs> you know, I didn't, I, you know, if, if nothing was in spec, then obviously this case would be a freaking paperweight. So let me pull this plate off. So you can see I was checking the gear tooth contact pattern. Um, we don't really care too much about the pinion side. What we care about is the ring gear side. And as you can see, we have our, um, so in regular ring gear pinion terminology, this is the coast side and this is the drive side, but this gear set is actually a uh, reverse cut. So if we look at this rear gear set, you can see the helix is going a different direction. Now this is because this is because basically our pinion is uh, sitting up higher than our ring gear and also because this is in the front. <clears throat> this doesn't necessarily rotate, you know, the helix doesn't make it rotate a different direction, um, but it matters when we're checking gear tooth contact pattern because basically this is actually our drive side, it's the opposite. So on that gear set, this would be our coast, but it's actually our drive. And this is our coast or on a regular cut, it would be our drive. <clears throat> Since it's a used gear set, it's pretty hard to get a good reading on the drive side of the gear because of wear. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at the coast side because there's not a lot of wear because the coast side only actually sees, um, you know, pressure when the car is going backwards. So you can see we got a really nice, almost a perfect pattern right there. And let me get a screwdriver. You can see it's just a little bit, a little bit above the bottom and it's perfectly centered between the heel and the toe. And then the bottom is the root and the top is the top. So you want it centered between the heel and the toe and the bottom and the root, which we have perfectly here. And then on the used gear set, since um, it's really hard to get a good reading on the drive side, you basically just want some contact um, from the toe to about halfway, which you can see we have pretty damn good there. And it's about halfway up. You can see where the wear mark is. It's about, or the white mark, you can see it's about halfway. So that's really good. That means our gear set, well, that means our case, all the measurements are perfect, like the pinion offset, um, the pinion height, the ring gear height, all that stuff is perfect, which I'm so happy about because that means this isn't a useless paperweight. This is actually gonna work and we're actually gonna be able to run this thing and get it all in spec. So let me throw the ring gear in real quick and I'll show you what the what the backlash is looking like. So I set it up for about five or six thousandths backlash. You can, probably can't see it, but you can hear it. You can see it a little bit. Um, I'll throw in the dial indicator indicator clip right now. All right, so I got my five thousandths backlash. It's repeatable. And then also, um, this was such a pain because basically what I had to do is there's a shim under this race. And I basically had to take this race out about 20 or 30 times, which got me really comfortable with working with the case. This case is really easy to get these, these races out when you really heat it up. And um, there, it's got a nice press fit when it cools back down. So those races aren't gonna be spinning or anything. Basically, you gotta take that shim out and I was having to grind it down on this belt sander, you know, with it running. And basically I worked it down from about 1.4 millimeters down to about 1.1, 1.15 to get it perfect. 
So I think what I'm gonna do now, since I know everything works and the case is good, I'm gonna get custom shims made. I'm gonna get like a one millimeter base shim and then I'll get 0.01 and like 0.05 millimeter. And then basically I can actually just add and subtract instead of having to grind because it's such a pain. And then the pinion, the pinion shim, at least on this gear set, this is a different gear set than the gear set that I used to design the case. So that's another good thing is you can use whatever gear set you want. You just have to shim it up. And um, the, the pinion was fine on this. The, the pinion, um, you can see, we know the pinion's good because that, that uh, mark is centered between the uh, root and the top. But I'll probably get some custom um, pinion shims made too. What I want to see is I want to get another gear set. I have more gear sets over there. And I want to try putting it in with the, the shims from this gear set. And I want to see if the shims are for um, tolerances in the gears or tolerances in the case. I would think it would be in the case because the gear, the tolerances have to be so tight on these gears. So what I'm hoping is that I can get like basically a starter shim kit and basically you throw that shim kit in and it should be ready to go. You might have to adjust it a little bit here and there, but we'll see. I'll have to play around with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with how this came out. Let me uh, throw this in and I'll show it, to, show it to you guys rotating. Oh, another thing is the preload. You have to set the bearing preload. So you have this tool right here. Right, this is a inch pound wrench. And um, where's my socket? I got a 30 millimeter socket somewhere around here. Here it is. Basically what you do is you put this on here and you rotate this. And you wanna see about, about, probably about 15 inch pounds. It's gonna be hard, but you can see it's a little tight right now, around 20. So we need to back that off a little bit. I don't have the crush sleeve in here. I'm actually getting crush sleeve eliminators made so that um, you don't have to use the stock crush sleeve because the stock crush sleeve, I'll pull this one. These actually crush too much from maybe a ton of torque going through the unit. You lose bearing preload and then your whole unit explodes and we don't want that. So we want a solid sleeve and basically we're gonna shim that sleeve with these little shims to get it uh, perfectly um, preloaded probably at about I guess 15 to 20 inch pounds. This is actually the same pinion. It's the same diameter, same bearings as the rear, which is really cool because that means you can see, you know, it's got a smaller, it's got smaller teeth. It's a little bit shorter, but it's the same spline. It uses the same bearings, um, the same everything. So we can use the same specs that we're going to use to set up the rear for the front in terms of, um, bearing preload and backlash. For backlash, 0.05 thousandths of seven thousandths of an inch is optimal. And we got about five to six thousand. So this thing is, this gear set's ready to go. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it because this has a little bit of spline wear. It's kind of hard to see, but it does have a little bit of wear. You can see right there. So I might try and find one with a perfect spline if I'm gonna go through the effort of all this, but we'll see. Another thing I want to show is the weight of this thing. About 54 pounds, that's with, with everything, with flange, yada, yada, yada. Without this flange, it's about 47 pounds. So it's about, I guess, eight or nine pounds more than the stock unit, which is, I mean, for how much more beefier this thing is, that's pretty, pretty damn impressive. I'll have to get a stock one and weigh it too, but I think it's around 42 or 43 pounds. I'll grab one next time I'm at the shop and bring it home. 